hi guys, it is a spectac... <coughs> Can't even get the first word out. It is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise in Garfield, Texas. And good lord, what ought I have to do today? It is Monday morning, April 16th, 2018. So, uh, I have got to, <clears throat> and I'm very much looking forward to it, having a... Um, being interviewed by my buddy Vegematic. I don't know when Veg is going to put that interview on uh, tonight or tomorrow, I guess. But anyway, you can look forward to that interview showing up soon. And then I need to get my ass back to the Folk Festival to uh, play music with 4,000 of my lovable, clueless friends. But since it is Monday, I'm going to do what I do every Monday, although this is going to be a little bit rushed version. You know, usually I spend hours a day, but uh, on my economic meltdown roundup rant, uh, where I simply open up the finance pages of the mainstream media to see how the global industrial economy, otherwise known as the New World Order, is pulling out all the stops to save the planet. <coughs> so this is just how they rolled off the uh <coughs> just how they rolled off the uh rolodex on the finance pages today i'm gonna highlight a few of these stories and then i'm just gonna go down the headlines let's start in the bottom of the ocean off the coast of japan several of my uh, alert tribes members have sent me this story many versions of it about this huge pile <coughs> of rare earth metals that these planet eaters off of Japan are claiming are going to give us rare earth metals from here to eternity. Uh, what I love about this story is how they're talking about uh, wh where this is, where they, where these planet eaters have found this great treasure trove is is at the bottom of some you know way down there and, and they're and they're passing this off the the bottom of the sea uh, and it is deep sea mining is what it is guys so now what they're doing and uh, these planet eaters and the mainstream media is lapping it up acting like the bottom of the ocean and here I think they call it sludge I've heard it oh it's just mud it's just sludge that well you know come to think of it they're probably right it probably is just this just this uh, what you're led to believe is an absolute biological desert down there uh, so they're peddling this is how they're going to be peddling this that there's no environmental damage from this fucking deep sea mining it's just sludge well as they say it probably is because the fucking trawlers have already been through there is my guess uh, <clears throat> the discovery of potentially millions of tons of valuable rare earth elements in sea sludge in sea sludge <clears throat> off of Japan has raised hopes that Asia's number two economy can reduce its dependence on Chinese supply uh, but experts warn that extracting the minerals used in technology ranging from mobile phones to electric vehicles is both costly and difficult, especially when buried miles deep in the ocean. Uh, let's see if they ever mention... Uh, Let's see if they ever mention uh, one time the environmental impacts of deep sea mining uh, anywhere uh, anywhere in this story. Nowhere in this story. Nowhere in this story 
uh, does it mention these fucking planet eaters as deep sea mining? I anybody who doesn't understand how deep sea mining as these motherfuckers leave no area of this planet untouched It'd be a major story over the 21st century. Okay, wow. So what is the reaction from the fossil fuel uh, companies over the uh, over World War III ramping up in Syria? Wow. <clears throat> Liquid natural gas prices soar on rising geopolitical tension. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, as President Trump threatens to launch missile strikes in Syria, he's already done it. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, these key geopolitical developments have placed tremendous upward pressure on global oil prices, and now there is another takeaway that is often being glossed over in energy news. This global tension also has a significant impact <coughs> on global natural gas prices. <coughs> Anybody who does not understand how World War III is good for energy investors. Uh, you know, uh, this, uh, this is a no-shit Sherlock connection. The more war we have on this planet, the more these fucking fossil fuel uh, energy giants are, are cheering. It is called the military-industrial complex feeding each other. You know, I mean, what an amazing system that uh, war is good for fossil fuels and, and other planet-killing things. As long as we're talking about uh, energy executives cheering on uh, World War III, what is the CEO of Shell up to if I can get in this fucking computer to work? <clears throat> Shell's CEO tells activists and investors, trust me to cut CO2. That was bullshit. Yes. Chief Executive Officer, this is from Bloomberg, Chief Executive Officer Ben Van Burden has the same message for activists, meaning environmental activists, seeking to bind Royal Dutch Shell to deep emission cuts and investors concerned about the merits of shifting away from oil and gas. Trust me. <clears throat> Uh, Van Burden advised shareholders on Monday this morning to reject a resolution from climate group Follow This that would set clear targets for the company's greenhouse gas emissions more specific than its current, than its current broad ambition. <coughs> yes, uh, let's see, take it away. Mr. Save the Planet, Planet Eater. Understanding what climate change means is one of the most important strategic questions on our minds today. We are testing the boundaries of our thinking. Yes, they are. They are, t they are testing the boundaries of their thinking uh, of where to go next to find this shit. So let's go from Shell to uh, Shell to Chevron. Shell to Chevron. Uh, Chevron green lights 5.1 billion dollar Gorgon expansion project. No <clears throat> shit, Sherlock. Chevron Corporation has finally announced its intentions to proceed with the next stage of its multi-billion dollar Gorgon liquid natural gas project in Western Australia's northwest coast. 
Gorgon is the largest single resource project in Australia dealing with the delivery of natural gas to international and domestic customers. Can you say China and India? The $69 billion gas project is one of the costliest energy projects ever, employing more than 10 thousand people to construct the processing facility at Barrow, at Barrow Island. Uh, the project has a shipment capacity, meaning shipping it off to China, of 15.6 million metric tons per year. There you go. Uh, so we've got 11 new wells, we've got offshore pipelines and subsea structures to pipe the gas, blah, 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 from Australia to our own country, Eagle Ford and Canna Whitford shale plays witness more oil rigs. All right, in its weekly release, Baker Hughes reported an increase in total oil rig counts in the United States. Oh, shit. Yes. So rigs engaged in the exploration in production of oil and natural gas in the United States. My the barn door is trying to knock over the camera. Oh. God, too much to deal with. Uh, rigs engaged in the exploration and production of oil and natural gas in the U.S. totaled 1,008 uh, in the week ending on Friday compared with the prior week's 1,003. Notably, total rig counts increased eight times in the past 10 weeks as rig count has been rising rapidly in U.S. shale resources. Uh, punctuated by a few pauses, the current nationwide rig count is considerably higher than this time last year when it stood at 847. But let's go from this country to our to our neighbors to the north in Canada. Uh, several versions of this story. Let me just pick this one that gets right to the point. Canada's Trudeau defends controversial pipeline project. This is what pretty boy. Canadian, pretty boy planet eater, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau on Sunday defended his government's backing of a controversial pipeline project, saying the world could not afford to choose between the environment and the economy. The world cannot afford to choose between the environment and the economy. Thank you, uh, you motherfucker. Uh, you little lying sack of shit, hypocrite, little fucking pretty boy for, for putting it right here. This is why we are so fucked. Although the world, including this little fuck face, is clearly choosing between the environment and the economy, and they're choosing the economy. It is the economy, stupid. Uh, Alright, what's the full quote? In an interview, blah blah blah, Trudeau acknowledged that environmentalists were concerned by the Trans Mountain Pipeline. But, he said, quote, Canadians and people around the world know that we cannot choose between what is good for the environment and good for the economy. You have to do both 
at the same time. And above all, you have to fund the transition toward reduced use of fossil fuels. So this is the way that uh, this little fucker is suggesting we fund the transition toward reducing the use of fossil fuels. How about cheering on a 715 mile, otherwise known as 1150 kilometer pipeline to move 890,000 barrels of oil per day from the landlocked Alberta's oil sands to the Pacific coast. I cannot think of any better way to fund the transition toward re reduced use of fossil fuels than that. Opponents of the pipeline point to the risk of oil spills at sea and say it flouts Trudeau's commitments, Trudeau's commitments to cutting Canada's greenhouse gas emissions. Oh, shit, okay, one more time. We cannot change everything in our economies overnight. It's clear that people on the left and ecologists are concerned, you know, about this planet-eating fucking pipeline pumping 900,000 barrels a day from the uh, from the oil sands to the Pacific Ocean to ship it to China. Hmm. But there are also uh, there are also people on the right who do not like the idea of a carbon tax. Close quote. He assured. Uh, and you know these the, these tree huggers that Canada would meet its targets under the 2015 Paris Accord on combating climate change. But of course, even if Canada and every fucking country on this planet meets it tar its targets, it's going to do not a goddamn thing to save the planet from climate change because being fucked is baked into the equation. Let's do look at one more. Trudeau in financial talks to resolve heated pipeline dispute. Prime Minister Trudeau said yesterday his government is holding financial discussions and weighing legislation to help resolve a high-stakes clash between two Canadian provinces over a major pipeline uh, project. The dispute in Canada's West, West has oil-rich Alberta boycotting trade with British Columbia over its environment-based opposition to the Trans Mountain Pipeline. The spat has raised fears of a constitutional crisis and Trudeau's own political future may be at stake. The project uh, which would triple the pipeline's capacity to carry Alberta's oil sands to a port in Vancouver, you know, to ship it off to China, is fiercely opposed by British Columbia's government, ecologists, and indigenous groups who warn of a possible environmental disaster. That's exactly what it is. Uh, Trudeau's liberal government in 2016 approved the, pro approved the expansion project aimed at helping landlocked Alberta ship its oil sands to the Pacific coast and on to overseas markets. And this was the quote, this was uh, Trudeau uh, talking about how he is going to meet Canada's Paris uh, targets, quote, I have instructed the Minister of Finance to initiate formal financial discussions with Texas 
energy company, Kinder Morgan, to remove the uncertainty overhanging the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion. Oh, shit, we are actively pursuing legislative options that will assert plus reinforce the federal government of Canada's jurisdiction in this matter, which we know we clearly have. Fuck British Columbia. Fuck the Native Americans. Fuck those e eco-Nazis. You know, this, this little motherfucker. Jesus fucking Christ. Anyway, how about from Trudeau to our own planet-eating motherfucker? Wow. More cars are coming from China, whether Donald Trump likes it or not. Oh, shit, Sherlock. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, Trump has singled out the auto industry as one of, you know, his favorite targets. China imposes tariffs of 25% on auto imports from the U.S., while Chinese-made cars face a mere 2.5% tariff. Uh, blah, blah, blah. What's likely, however, at a, the, the bottom line of all of this tariff, trade war, all of this shit being talked about, gee, here's the bottom line. What's more likely, however, is a surge of Chinese-made cars coming into the U.S. market. Americans bought about 50,000 made-in-China cars in 2017, but that figure is expected to swell to 225,000 by next year, and it should hit 500,000 made-in-China cars by the year 2023. Uh, according to forecasts from the Center for Automotive Research, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and those won't be just strange-sounding Chinese brands, but also will include cars built in China by well-known automakers such as Buick, Volvo, and Ford. Meanwhile, Automakers sold about 267,000 U.S. made cars in China last year. But uh, I'm just going to go down uh, the headlines. Those I picked out, and then for time's sake, so let's just go down uh, the business page headlines. Uh, 80,000 more retail stores could close by 2025. Trump blasts China and Russia for devaluing their countries. African countries warned against becoming a fortress for trade by the World Trade Organization. Here are four stocks to buy as Chinese economy remains resilient. Is OPEC's mission accomplished? OPEC's mission will be accomplished when the planet turns into Venus. Uh, Goldman Sachs says emerging markets now look like rich countries. Oh, God. Uh, lithium demand growing at an unstoppable pace. Is this the oil opportunity of the year? This is a Chinese oil company sitting on what might be a major oil discovery, a 182 million barrel with reserve with great potential to grow. And this would be on the shores of the White Nile River is where they're talking about. Here is, will natural 
resource partners continue to surge higher. This is this corporate greenwashing, uh, planet-eating corporation, natural resources partners. Uh, you know, just rubbing this shit in our faces. Uh, they're some of the biggest fucking planet eaters on the goddamn planet. As of late, it has been a great time to be an investor in natural resource partners. There you go. Uh, how about four defense picks? Four defense, meaning investing in the, in the military industrial combat, four defense picks as Syria could trigger wider conflict. There you go. Wall Street futures rise amid missile attack on Syria. Oil and gas lobby comes out against a coal utilities bailout. Wow. Here is Bank of America's first quarter profits rise to record six point nine billion dollars. This is this is their profits the first quarter. This is my planet eating bank. Good for them. Good for Bank of America. A record profit the first three as Bank of America will continue to chug along. Say experts, do you think so? Uh, let's see. Here is Dow DuPont. Dow DuPont plans to invest $100 million in facility expansion <coughs> here in the good old state of Texas. <coughs> Here's a story about investing in electric vehicles. Wow. The, you know, the number one story on the planet today, of course, is Vladimir Putin predicting global chaos if U.S. hits C Syria again. And what is the effect on the stock market? Futures point higher as Putin predicts global chaos if U.S. hits Syria again. Wow. Okay, do you think so? Uh, well, we got some doom and gloomers. A solid earnings season will not be enough to avert another correction. Economist Robert Schiller says we will see about that. Wow! Here is Motai Group selling shares in Zimbabwe chrome mining operations. There you go. Global stock stable as investors react calmly after military strike. <coughs> Syria strike is not causing panic in Mideast market, analysts say. It's not causing panic, it's causing uh, celebration. Here is the world's most profitable oil major. That would be Aramco. Aramco, the oil company that no one's ever heard of, is now the number one most profitable oil major on the planet. Uh, <clears throat> Automobiles drive U.S. retail sales higher in March as U.S. retail sales rebound in latest sign consumer weakness is fading. Let's see. Uh, Oh, IRS deadline is tomorrow, but that might mean today. This is me filing my taxes for the year. 
Here is Oracle expects acceleration in cloud business. All right, BlackRock CEO Larry Fink surpasses $1 billion in his own personal fortune. There you go. Uh, here's some other billionaire. They are cheering on. Uh, so Kinder Morgan, this is the one doing that pipeline in Canada. Uh, celebrating Justin Trudeau doing their bid, bid and bidding for them. So, uh, what is in the cards for Kinder Morgan? So I guess, wow, last quarter the company delivered an earning surprise of 16.7%. There you go. Uh, here's China's new GDP report uh, getting ready to come out. Uh, Wall Street economists see global growth cresting, not collapsing. There you go. Earnings coming through better than expected. Hmm. Wow. Uh, here is how this is one of just just one of these stock analysts uh, talking about how I am trading the U.S. missile strike on Syria. This is all of these planet eaters this morning cheering on Donald Trump. Um, anyway, guys, I think. We get it by now. Uh, new sanctions on Russia could lift oil prices further. Minimum wage, minimum wages for workers have not gone up since 1996. Here's why that is a problem. There you go. Uh, Bank of America beats street on top and bottom lines. Here are the nine high beta energy stocks that can, so that can soar. Oh, Jesus. Uh, more shit about Facebook. Um, do you see why this takes me four hours every Monday to do this? Are we ever going to get to the bottom? This is just the headlines. All I'm trying to do is, is go through the fucking headlines. Uh, but I think, anyway, guys, I guess it's just never ending. Never ending. Uh, don't forget investing in Starbucks. That's always a good bet. Uh, the bull case just keeps getting better for Cisco Systems. Wall Street rises, blah, blah, blah. Uh, in, 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 anyway, one more time. I think they're starting to repeat themselves. Wall Street futures rise, shrug off. Allied missile attack on Syria. Anyway, guys, uh, I think we get it. Uh, we are so fucked, but I've got to wrap up this week's economic meltdown roundup rant and get ready for my interview with my buddy uh, Vegematic and uh, then head off to the folk festival. The little dog gets to come two more days before I have to take him to the little dog sitter. Bye, guys.